So I'm old enough to remember when you were a bug bugaboo of the right, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite that young, but I'm old enough to remember when the OJ trial happened. I remember them wheeling the TV into my public school classroom right. for the reading of the verdict. I think I was maybe 10 at the time. Uh, and I remember that in our household, your name was, was a bit of a dirty word because you were one of the attorneys defending right. OJ Simpson. And of course, as everyone who was mainly sentient at the time thought O.J. Simpson was deeply guilty. So, yeah, I'm not going to ask you whether O.J. Simpson was guilty because attorney-client privilege. But with that said, yeah, you defend clients and, and criminal defense attorneys have defended clients knowing, presumably, or at least thinking, that they're guilty. How do you square that, believing that your own client has, has done something deeply evil or immoral, and then going in and defending them on it? I think much basis? the same way a Catholic priest defends not turning in a penitent who has admitted committing a terrible crime. The big difference between a Catholic priest and a lawyer is if a lawyer, if a client tells me I've killed somebody, I'm going to go and do it again, or I've beaten my wife, I'm going to go back and beat her, I'm obligated to turn him in because it's a future crime. A priest can't do that. A priest says, no, I, I'm going to try to persuade you and talk you out of it. Or a doctor. Um, my daughter-in-law is an emergency room doctor. She has almost certainly saved the lives of people who have gone out and done terrible things in, in the future. It's a very important part of our legal system that everybody get a defense. Um, I uniquely uh, get the most difficult cases because you know, I've had some success. And also as a professor, I can take more of these cases uh, pro bono. And so I've had a lot of people who I've strongly suspected were probably guilty. In a couple of cases, I was pleasantly surprised at the end. Klaus von Bülow, I was presently surprised. But you know, you talk about not being able to ask me whether or not OJ did it. Uh, when I first, uh, uh, when Bibi Netanyahu, who I've known since he's 22 years old, became prime minister, I was in Israel. He invited me, my wife, and my daughter to come see him in his new digs. And we, we went and we schmoozed and we took pictures. Then he took me into the little private room and said, Alan, I have a question I've always wanted to ask you. Did OJ do it? And I said, Mr. Prime Minister, there's a question I've always wanted to ask you. Does Israel have nuclear weapons? <laughs> and he said... <laughs> you know I can't tell you that. And I said, uh-huh, you know I can't tell uh, you that. Okay, right, so yeah, right, you right. did grow up in a Jewish school. Facts don't care about your feelings. And it's a fact that The Ben Shapiro Show is the largest conservative podcast in the nation. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and stay up to date on all of our content.